Welcome back to Peace Review. Today, we are going to look at the gastrointestinal system, which is commonly known as the digestive system. All right, now for the T's, you are expected to identify, to know the different parts of the system. You also need to know the general function of the system and the function for different parts of the system. Lastly, you are expected to know some of the major enzymes in the system and what do those enzymes do. And you probably already know that those are going to be digestive enzymes that help break down food. All right, now a quick overview. The digestive system um, is actually composed of two parts. The first part is a continuous tube that starts from the mouth and ends at the anus. And that's basically the pathway where the food is going to travel, right? So that's the alimentary canal, often known as the GI tract. The second part is the accessory digestive organs. So those organs are not um, directly located at the GI tract, the continuous tube, but they are uh, in some way connected to the alimentary canal. And uh, these, digestive, these accessory digestive organs uh, usually make uh, some substances that can further aid digestion. For example, pancreas secretes a lot of digestive enzymes to kind of supplement what's uh, already in the stomach and the small intestine. All right, now the general function for the system is to inject that, you know, when you take in food, digest the breakdown food, absorb when you break down food to smaller molecules. Most of those molecules are nutrients, right? I mean, your body is going to absorb those nutrients. And lastly, you need to eliminate or get rid of the unusable food as feces, right? That's the undigested parts of your food. All right, now for digestion, we are looking at two types of digestion. Mechanical digestion, where the food is physically broken, broken down, right? The, uh, for example, the large pieces may be reduced to small pieces, right? So that's mechanical digestion. The system also utilizes enzymes to carry out chemical digestion. And after digestion, the nutrients, which can be amino acids or glucose, right? Those are the smaller molecules after digestion. Those nutrients will be absorbed into bloodstream. So those nutrients can cross the walls of the GI tract and get into the bloodstream. So that's how your body absorbs the nutrients. And through bloodstream, um, these nutrients can be uh, distributed into different parts of your body. Okay, so that's how your, your tissues and cells get nutrients. Now, um, last thing I want to mention is uh, in your GI tract, there is a lot of smooth muscle because you are performing mechanical digestion, right? And also uh, the tract has to have some kind of movement to kind of push food down the tract, down the GI tract, right? So you need to generate a little force and that's all done by the smooth muscle. So the smooth muscle in the GI tract is under parasympathetic nervous system control. If you remember when we talk about the nervous system, we looked at the two divisions, parasympathetic and sympathetic, right? So these two systems kind of do the opposite things, right? The sympathetic nervous system um, allow your body to, and I don't know if you remember this, fight or flight, right? So that's when you're kind of under stress, right? You really need to utilize your brain, utilize your skeletal muscles. Now, on the other hand, the parasympathetic nervous system will be in control when you're more relaxed, right? That's when we say digest and rest. There you go. So that's why the GI tract is under the control of a parasympathetic nervous system. So that's when you're relaxed, you're not nervous about anything, and your body can concentrate on resting and you know digesting food and get all the nutrients. All right, now here's a diagram that I found um, that has a pretty good kind of uh, overview on all the structures uh, in this in the system. So we can follow the, the pathway for food. So we're gonna do the alimentary canal first, and then we'll look at some of the accessory digestive organs. So 
in the mouth, which is the oral cavity, that's when the food enters your body, right? And then the food is going to go through some mechanical digestion, right? You use teeth in your mouth to kind of grind the food. So that's kind of like a physical breakdown of the food. All right, after that, the food is going to go through your pharynx. So that's kind of your throat region. And then the food is going to travel down esophagus, right? Esophagus over here. Esophagus is connected to the stomach. So that's the next stop for food. In esophagus, in the wall of esophagus, there's smooth muscle so that the smooth muscle can contract. And we'll talk about that kind of force, it's a peristalsis movement. So that peristalsis movement will generate a little bit of force to kind of slowly push food down, all right? And then food is going to enter stomach, like we said earlier. So in stomach, there can be mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. So the stomach wall has actually three layers of smooth muscle, which, which is one more layer than you know, the rest of the elementary canal. And that's because the stomach performs a lot of the mechanical digestion. So um, the smooth muscles in the stomach wall will contract and this allows the stomach to mix things, to churn. Um, so uh, there is a lot of mechanical digestion going on in the stomach to reduce uh, food particle size, to make them really small, which is easier for the further chemical digestion and absorption. There's also uh, chemical digestion going on in the stomach. As we know that there is an enzyme, which is called a pepsin. We'll mention this enzyme again later. So pepsin uh, can break down proteins. Right? So there is protein digestion in the stomach. All right, now after stomach, food will enter small intestine. So small intestine right here. Now small intestine is divided into three sections. So um, upon leaving the stomach, food is going to travel down the first section, which is duodenum first, right? duodenum. And then the rest of this is jejunum and ileum. All right. Now after small intestine, food will get to large intestine. So in this picture, the large intestine is in this kind of darker color. So that's the large intestine. Now again, the large intestine is divided into a few sections. So this first section right here, that's a cecum. So the label is on the right side, that's a cecum. So cecum is the part of the large intestine that's connected to the small intestine. Now connecting to cecum is another structure that, that, that everybody's very familiar with. So that's appendix. So this little kind of, kind of like a tail thing. So that's the appendix. So now you know where the appendix is. All right, and then after cecum, you have a colon, right? That's the majority of the large intestine. So we have ascending colons going up and we have transverse colon, it kind of is going across. And then we have the down section, which is the descending colon. And we have sigmoid colon because it kind of curves a little bit. And then we have a rectum, which temporarily stores uh, feces. And then the last stop, that's the anus, right? So that's where the, the, the uh, feces comes out of the body. All right, so that's the major part of the alimentary canal. All right, now let's look at the accessory di digestive organs. First, a couple are going to be associate, associated with the oral, oral cavity. Um, the teeth are not shown here, but you know there are teeth here. Also have a tongue, right? Tongue is a kind of big piece of muscle, skeletal muscle. And the tongue really kind of helps in mixing things in the mouth, right? Makes the food with the saliva. We also have a salivary gland that will deliver their secretion, which is saliva, into the oral cavity. And saliva has enzymes, right? Digestive enzymes, which can digest starch, right? So that enzyme is called amylase, and this digests starch. 
So when you uh, think about chemical digestion, it really starts in the mouth. So that's the first location for chemical digestion. All right, now the next accessory organ that we're gonna look at is the liver. So liver is a very big organ in the abdominal cavity. And liver is kind of connected to the gallbladder, which is this green sac. So in terms of uh, digestion, liver secretes a bile. Bile. And then bile will be temporarily stored in the gallbladder. The, in the gallbladder. So the gallbladder is really kind of like a storage site. So when you eat, the gallbladder will send the bile into the small intestine and specifically duodenum. So duodenum will receive a bile. Why do we need a bile? Bile aid the digestion of lipid. Okay. So when you eat a lot of fatty food, you know, all that fats have to be digested, right? But those fats are not water soluble. Not water soluble. And we'll talk about this again when we look at uh, important micromolecules such as carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. So you will know that lipids are not soluble. So th think about the, the oil you use to cook and um, you know the fat that comes out of bacon when you cook bacon. So those lipids are not water soluble. But the enzymes, that digestive enzymes are normally water soluble. So it's easier if we could have the lipids digest in water. Um, it's easier for the enzymes to kind of chemically attack the molecules and break them down. So who does the job? Who helps lipids dissolve better in water? And that's the bile salts in bile. So those um, chemicals in the bile work as a emulsifier. So that's going to help the lipids dissolve a little better in water and, and makes it easier for the enzymes to break down the big lipid molecules. Okay. All right, so that's liver. And the next uh, accessory organ is a very, very important one. And that's a pancreas. So a lot of times the pancreas is kind of hidden behind the stomach, behind the small intestine, so you don't see it uh, very easily. Pancreas secretes pancreatic juice, pancreatic juice, which contains a lot of digestive enzymes for lipids, for proteins. Um, just like the bile, pancreas is going to send the pancreas juice to duodenum, duodenum, this first section of the small, the small intestine. So you can see that duodenum is actually very, very important in terms of the digestion. All right, so the, the pancreatic juice has a lot of digestive enzymes. All right, so these are the important structures of the digestive system. Uh, we mentioned the smooth muscle earlier, and we talked about how important smooth muscle is in digestive system, right, in terms of uh, pushing, th pushing things down, right, so that the food can travel down your uh, alimentary canal. It's, it's not going to, you know, get stuck somewhere. And also in terms of mechanical digestion, right? You need to generate a little bit of force to kind of mix things up, to churn things. So that's what the smooth muscle does. Now, uh, the smooth muscle has this kind of peristalsis movement. So this is what happens. This is how smooth muscle in the tract can push things down. So this is a food bolus, okay. food bolus, all right? Now, what happens is the smooth muscle in the wall of the GI tract, so that's the wall, right? Um, so certain sections will have a contraction. This is the smooth muscle will contract, right? And that creates a little kind of constriction here. And then it's going to push the foot bolus down, right? And then the next section contract and again push things down. So that's what happens. And we call this type of kind of muscle uh, movement the peristalsis. Peristalsis. And it's not just in the digestive system. It's in, for example, in the urinary system as well. And especially in ureters. So ureters are the kind of tubes that connect the kidneys to the urinary bladder. 
and urine is going to flow from the kidneys into the ureter. And then the ureters have these smooth muscles in the wall, and then those smooth muscles will contract, generate pyrostasis to push urine down into the urinary bladder. Okay, so uh, you also have this type of movement in urinary system. You definitely need to know what peristalsis is because I have seen um, a couple questions on peristalsis on TEAS.